Okay, this is an introduction to the monosaccharides. And there isn't a huge amount that you need to know about monosaccharides. We're more really concerned with how they bond together. But you are expected to recognise monosaccharides in both their chain form and their ring form. So we're going to use glucose as our example because it's um, the most common, I suppose, the one that you're going to come across most often. So chain form, you know from GCSE, glucose has the formula C6 H12O6. So it has six carbons in a chain, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they are generally numbered from top to bottom. So carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. We need six oxygens attaching. Most of those are going to occur as OH groups. So I've got an OH there, OH there, OH there, OH on that side, OH on that side, and We've got a double bonded oxygen there, so remember a double bond is where it's sharing two pairs of electrons. So, carbon needs, needs to form four bonds, so one, two, three, everything else fills up with hydrogen. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Final count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hydrogens, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 oxygens. Perfect. Uh, interchangeably then, this chain can form a ring. Now rings come in two shapes, they come in pentagons and they come in hexagons. Glucose happens to be a hexagon. And really importantly, part of that hexagon is oxygen. So this oxygen up here is going to sort of curve around and form a, form a nice ring, actually with carbon number five. So, hexagon shape. Each one of these junctions represents a carbon. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and our sixth one is sticking up there. Now I'm using this to abbreviate because we don't need to necessarily add in every group. So all of our carbons have four bonds, that carbon's got four bonds, and so has this. So we could add in the group at the top and that's added in in one of two ways. We can write it down as CH2OH which tells you which groups are attached or you could write that bit out in full as CHHOH and obviously this is bonded to this carbon down here. We then need to put the OH groups on. OH groups tend to be reactive. So we're going to go down, down, up, down. And I've drawn this sort of back to front because the ox it reflects the bonding. So the oxygen is attached to the hydrogen. And a little bit lazy, I know, but I'm going to leave all the others blank. And they just represent the hydrogens that are filling up um, all the available, all the other available bonds. And then we need to number. And, and numbering is quite important because if you're describing uh, the form of different um, monosaccharides, you might want to refer to the carbon number on which particular group you're acting on. So we always start numbering to the right of the oxygen going in a clockwise direction. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
So that's it for sort of chain and ring form. If you were to see these um, written down you are expected to recognise them. Uh, the other thing is that all of the monosaccharides are named for the number of carbons. So we can start off with a triose which has the formula C3H6O3. Uh, I've got to say you don't see many with four in them. There are a few. We've got uh, pentoses, so I'm just doing them in sort of, you know, what you're most likely to come across. C5H12O5 and the hexoses which are C6, H12, I'm oh, sorry, that pento should be H10, um, O6. So, you can see there's a bit of a pattern here. We've always got twice as much carbon as hydrogen, we have if you write it down correctly. <coughs> um, and so we can come up with a general sort of formula for all monosaccharides that works for them all. So, if you were sort of to put an N in, representing number of carbons, it would be C N H 2 N O N. And we can simplify that down to C H 2 O bracket that and put the N on the outside. So it means the number of, of oxygens always equals the number of carbons and you've always got twice as many hydrogens. And this is actually how it's named. It's they, They're all carbo hydrates, the hydrate referring to the water. So that's chain and ring form. You need to know those terms, trios, pentos, hexos, and the general formula for a monosaccharide. Now that actually will only work for a monosaccharide. There are other things involved. So this brings us neatly on to having looked at the chain and ring forms to isomers. Now there are various different hexose sugars and they all have the molecular formula C6H12O6. So glucose is one, mannose is another, galactose, fructose, sorbose, they all have six carbons. But the carbons and oxygens and hydrogens are all arranged slightly differently so we call them isomers. And if their properties are very different, then we might give them different names like glucose and galactose, or glucose and fructose, galactose and fructose. So isomers, same molecular formula, different structural formulae. So, our two, my two examples here are glucose and galactose. They're both hexo sugars. They both have the same molecular formula, C6H12O6. So these are hexoses. And if we had to describe the difference between the two, the first thing we would have to do is spot what that difference is. So um, I like to be quite logical when I'm spotting the difference. I'm going to start with the oxygen, work my way around. That's the same, that's the same, that's the same, and this one's different. So this group is at the top there and at the bottom there. Carry on round, no more differences. If I needed to describe it, I'm then going to need to number the carbon. So I need to know what carbon that difference is around. So, starting with the oxygen, number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now I can really tighten things up and say, yes, on carbon number 4, in glucose the OH group is below, and on galactose, on carbon number 4, the OH group is above. 
So these two molecules have very different uh, properties and because of that we call them by different names. Sometimes they don't. So glucose, and these are the two isomers that you need to know of glucose. Glucose has two isomers. Uh, this one is called the alpha isomer and its other form, I'm just going to turn this over so I can draw on the back, still hexagonal, still got the oxygen, same numbers of carbons and on carbon number, I'm just going to number the carbons, on carbon number one Instead of having that OH group below, the OH group is above. So beta goes above, or up, down, up, down. Now actually in its monomer form, if you uh, were to break down a macro or a big molecule of polymer that had alpha glucose in it and you get your glucose units that you can use. You can use them if you break down a, a polymer of beta glucose and break it down you can use those monomers. They don't have significantly different properties so they are still called, even though they're different isomers, they're still glucose, one's alpha and one's beta. Now you do need to know that difference and you do need to be able to describe it in terms of the orientation around carbon number one. So what else do you need to know about monosaccharides? You need to know some of the functions of the major monosaccharides and what sort of monosaccharide they are. So we'll start small and go big. So our smallest monosaccharide that you need to know is a triose called glyceraldehyde. And this is what we call an intermediate in respiration. Now what res intermediate means is that you've got a pathway in respiration and you did respiration at GCSE level so you know that you start off with glucose and you end up with carbon dioxide and water. The bits in between, that doesn't happen all at once. All those in-between reactions contain different molecules, one of which is glyceraldehyde, so we refer to it as an intermediate. We've got ribose, which is a pentose. Um, and this has actually got a sort of a pentagon shape, um, as you can imagine. And ribose is part, it's, a, it's part of a structure, so it's part of an RNA, which stands for ribonucleic acid, or ATP nucleotide. So a nucleotide is quite a big molecule, it consists of a sugar, a phosphate and a base, if you're looking at the nucleotides making up RNA or ATP, we're looking at ribose. The one that you've heard of, of course, is deoxyribose. Another pentose. And this is part of a DNA nucleotide. It's the sugar component of uh, DNA nucleotides. Now remember, I said if we knew what the uh, uh, the number of carbons, we can work out from our general formula. So if we did the ribose, and we know it's a pentose, C5H10O5. Now the kind of exception to that is that this is deoxyribose. Deoxy means it's got one less oxygen than ribose. So this is C5H10O4. <coughs> so that's what, you know, that's, I, that's a kind of question that might test your understanding of uh, these formulae. 
So glucose uh, is obviously one that, so all of the rest of these, these are all our hexose sugars that you need to know. So this is the uh, start molecule for respiration. And it's also the transport sugar in animals for that reason. Plants have a different one, they're slightly less active than animals. So uh, animals tend to use this one to transport their cells from their digestive system. Uh, galactose is a component In, um, in lactose, which is milk sugar, that's one of our disaccharides that we'll need to know about, and fructose is the sugar in fruit. And it's also a respiration intermediate. So all of these sugars, so this one, this one, this one, this one, are all involved in energy release. Okay, that's pretty much what you need to know about monosaccharides. See you next time for disaccharides.